Hi, this is John Lee, and thanks for tuning in to Synfig tutorial number 6, Project Dimensions and Basic Masking. You can follow along on the Synfig website if you like by heading over to www.synfig.org, click on Documentation towards the top, and under User Documentation, choose Tutorials. Alright, it's taking a little while to load. Any day now. Okay, there we go. And under basic tutorials, choose basic masking. And here's some of what we'll be covering in today's video. Alright, so one of the things that tends to confuse newcomers to Synfig is setting up the project dimensions. So let's head over to our project settings by clicking on the carrot menu button on the upper left corner of our canvas window, choosing edit, and then click on properties and our canvas info window opens up and under the image tab you'll see two different categories the image size and the image area categories under image size I already have a background set up by the way uh, at uh, 1080 pixels in height and at 1440 pixels in length so I want my project I want this background image to export to fit within to fit exactly within the canvas window. So I'm going to go over to image size and tell it to set my height to 1440, I'm sorry, the width to 1440, and I'm going to set the height to 1080. I'm going to click apply and notice that the uh, canvas dimensions got a lot bigger. And then I'm going to click OK. So Theoretically, when I import my image at those dimensions, the image, the background PNG image that I'm about to import should fit exactly within this canvas window. But watch what happens. File. We're going to click on our carrot menu, choose File, and then choose Import. And then we're going to bring in our image. And look what happened. It's only showing a very small section of our background image. And you might be asking, why is that? Well, to answer that question, let's head back to our project settings, click on the carrot menu button, go to edit, click on properties. And again, I mentioned under the image tab that there are two different areas, the image size and the image area category. Now the image size um, settings define the export settings of your project. So when you render an image or when you export a movie, it will export at a height of 1080 pixels and at a width of 1440 pixels. Unfortunately, the image size does not define the dimensions of your canvas, which is where you create all of your artwork and uh, set up your animation. That's where the image area category comes in, here at the bottom. Unfortunately, the image area category is not defined in pixels, like the image size category is. It's actually defined in what I'm going to call synfig units. And unfortunately, you have to convert pixels into synfig units if you want to have your canvas set up exactly to the dimensions of your imported image. So how do you do the conversion? Let's take a look at another thing I have set up here. One synfig unit is equal to 60 pixels. So this is what we're going to use to convert pixels into synfig units. So let's break out our calculator. And again, I mentioned my image height is 1080 pixels. So if we take 1080 pixels and divide that by 60 pixels, that gives us the number of synfig units. So the height is actually 18 synfig units. Let's also look at the length. So we know the length of our image is 1440 pixels. If we divide that by 60, we get 24 synfig units. So these are the units that we have to work with when we're entering in our image area information here at the bottom. This is the image area that's going to define the dimensions of our canvas. And another thing I want to note here is that the, the image area uses a coordinate system. So the exact center of the canvas, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate are both zero. 
and you have to define the top half and the bottom half of your image and the right half and the left half length of your image. So under image area again, top left X, this is basically how long is the left side of your image. We have to tell it that it is, well, we know that the left, we know that the total length of our image is 24 cinfig units long. But since we only want half of the length of our image, it is actually going to be 12 cinfig units long. So since we're defining the left half of our image, we're going to call it, we're going to say negative 12. And to define the positive half of our image, it's going to be positive 12. So it's right, the, that's the left and right of our image. So 12 units plus 12 units gives you a total of 24 cinfig units long, which is the equivalent of, oops, let me just change this, I don't know why that's changed, which is the equivalent of 1440 pixels long. The same goes, holds true for the top and bottom half of our image. So we know that the, um, let's see, let's look back at our thing. We know that the height of our image is 18 cinfig units long. So the top half of our image will be 9 cinfig units tall. The bottom half will be negative 9 cinfig units tall. If you click apply, so 9 plus 9 is 18 cinfig units, which is the equivalent of, I don't know why, but the width and height seem to change when you are messing around with the image area dimensions here. So you have to retype in your project settings, your export settings here, 1440 by 1080. Oh God, it changes everything. I'm not sure why it does that, but just be aware that sometimes it doesn't cooperate. Negative 12. Positive 12. Nine. Negative nine. All right, we're gonna hit apply. And I'm also gonna change, rechange the width and height again. I don't know, sometimes when you play with these numbers, it affects, see, why does it do that? Shouldn't be doing that. All right, there we go. Looks like it's working now. All right, so now I'm gonna click Apply. And so now our export resolution is 1440 by 1080 and our canvas area is also 1440 by 1080, but it's measured within cinfig units, so just keep that in mind. One other thing I wanna draw your attention to is the image span category, uh, image span dialog box, and this is set to 30, and what that means, this is actually measured in cinfig units, not pixels. And the image span is the length of the diagonal of the canvas. So the length of the diagonal is 30 cinfig units long. And if you multiply that by that by 60, sixty times thirty, that's how long our diagonal is in pixels. So it's eighteen hundred pixels long just bring up that other image I was working with. So we have the height is 1080 pixels, the length is 1440 pixels, and the image span, which is the diagonal, is 1880 pixels long. So if you wanted, to, if you remember trigonometry, you can use the Pythagorean theorem. Instead of entering the x, y, uh, the x and y coordinates, you can use the Pythagorean theorem and just enter in the uh, image, one image span number, and uh, that'll also set your canvas up. So just remember A is height, B is length, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, which is the, um, which gives us the square of the length of our diagonal. So to figure out the diagonal, you have to do the square root of C squared to get your diagonal in pixels or whatever units you're using. I hope that made sense, but you don't have to worry about that. Okay. So I hope that 
wasn't too confusing and it gives you a good idea of how to set up your project settings. So just review, image size is the export settings and the image area is the canvas dimension settings, which are measured again within SIGFIG units. And one SIGFIG unit equals 60 pixels. Unfortunately, it's confusing. I wish it could be a little more user-friendly, but when the Synfig developers first created this program, they really weren't concerned, I guess, with being user-friendly. So hopefully in a future version of Synfig, they can resolve this so that uh, it's much more intuitive. But this is what we have to work with for now. It is what it is. All right, so now let's take a look at masking. And I already have my background image set up, which is 1080 by 1440. Now I'm gonna import another image file, click on the carrot menu, file, import, and then choose the image you want to bring in. In this case, it's blue car, which is a PNG image. Now, right now, when I move the blue car layer around on the screen, it's always in front of our background image. Well, what if I wanted the blue car to go behind certain elements of our background image? Like, let's say I want the blue car to go behind this guy with the glasses. Unfortunately, you can't use you can't move the blue car layer behind the background layer because if you do that, it goes completely behind the background. So one of the ways we can address this is by using masks. So let's set up our first masks. Uh, our, our first mask. We actually have three masks that we're going to be working with. One where we're going to be hiding certain elements. It's called a hiding mask. Another which we're going to be using a revealing mask to hide certain elements. And then we're going to have another revealing, another revealing mask method. So the first method we're going to be working with is the hiding mask method. So click on your blue car, or click on this blue car layer, and then choose. Now oh, instead of choosing new layer, you know what? I'm going to use the rectangle tool. So let's go with the rectangle tool. Click on that in your toolbox. Let me zoom in a little bit. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle around the element of the background that I want the car to go behind. So it's this guy with the glasses, as you can see. Now the rectangle tool creates a perfect square. We need to bevel the edges. So I'm just click on the rectangle layer. I'm going to insert another vector point at each corner. So right click on your mouse near each corner and choose insert item smart right click choose insert item smart right click choose insert item smart insert item smart so each corner should have a total of two vector points and let me turn off the visibility of the rectangle layer by clicking by unchecking the box in the uh, layer panel window let's zoom in I'm only going to do two of these corners because I don't want to spend too much time on this. All right, so move one vector point here, move one vector point around there. And do the same for, all, for these other, this other corner at the bottom. And then I'm going to turn on my Bezier handles toggle button here at the top of the canvas. Just start extending. So, just start extending your Bezier handle so that the curve matches our background image. That looks pretty good, so I'm going to leave it that. Alright. Alright, so if you remember in a previous tutorial, each layer can potentially affect every layer beneath it. So. We're going to turn this mask layer, uh, we're going to turn this rectangle layer into a mask layer by going over to the, by first selecting on the rectangle layer, and then heading over to the blend method um, option under our uh, parameters tab. So under blend method, we're going to choose alpha over, which means that anything below this mask will be hidden. Unfortunately, right now, our mask is hiding both the blue car layer and the background layer. So let us let me just move my blue car layer around a little bit. 
So you see, when you move the blue car layer under the mask, it starts to disappear. But I only want the mask to hide the blue car layer, not the background. So to limit the scope of this mask, we have to create a group layer where we put the uh, mask layer. Let me just rename this rectangle to mask. And the element that we want to mask, which in this case is a blue car, into a group folder. So you can select those two layers, right click and choose group layer, or you can also click, uh, click on the group layer button at the bottom of your layer panel window. And when you do that, notice that the background has reappeared. And if we enter our group layer and start moving our blue car layer around, you'll notice that it is now behind, it moves behind our uh, glasses, the guy with glasses panel. So this is what's called a hiding mask. So now I'm going to create something that we're going to call a revealing mask. And what we're going to do is, let's see, let me just change this mask. And change the blend method to um, back to composite. And now what I'm going to do is move the blue car layer above the mask layer in the group. So let's just highlight the blue car, PNG layer, click on raise layer, and now the blue car layer is above the mask. And this time we're going to mess with the blend settings of our blue car layer. And to do that, highlight the blue car layer, head over to your parameters tab, and change the blend method option to straight on to. And when you do that, notice that the uh, mask has become invisible, but when you move the blue car layer over the mask this time, the image is now only, is contained completely within the mask. And we call this, this is our first revealing mask method. Right, so that's another way you can use a mask. Now let's also look at another revealing mask method, which uh, basically serves the same purpose, but is a little bit more flexible. What we're going to do is raise the mask upwards, select the mask layer, raise layer, and this time, uh, let me just change the uh, blue car blend method back to composite and this time the mask layer will be set to Ooh, okay it's gonna be set to alpha over which is what we did earlier alpha over and even though our car is underneath the mask it's still not showing because you now have to click off uh, have your mask layer selected and tick off invert under your parameters tab and now our car layer appears so now everything under this mask layer within the group folder will be Reve uh, will be revealed by this mask. All right, so that's a second method of using a revealing mask. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Please click like and or subscribe if you liked it, and I'll see you in a future video. Thanks for watching.